Hey, welcome back. We're talking about solving equations today, and we're going to do that by graphing functions. What? Let's start off with a little bit of review right here. Um, before we get started, we're going to graph lots of different types of equations. So two of the equations we're going to graph, the absolute value equation, okay, so the absolute value of x, and the square root of x. So we have to review what those two things mean. So the first, the absolute value of x, or the absolute value of a number. If you remember what that means is it it means to make the number positive. So the absolute value of negative 12, if you see those straight lines around the outside of negative 12, it means turn it into a 12. Now what if it's already a positive 12? Well then it stays positive 12. Okay, so absolute value is actually pretty easy. We can fill this table out really quickly. If we take the absolute value of negative 2, um, that should give us a 2 and we take the absolute value of negative 1, it's a 1. And then a 0, that doesn't change, and you take the absolute value of 1, it stays a 1, and then a 2. Okay, so that's easy to figure out. The other one on this side is the square root of x. Now if you remember, the square root is the number that when you multiply it times itself gives you whatever's on the inside. So in this case it's a 16, we know that 4 times 4 is a 16, so the square root of 16 is 4. Now, there's something tricky about this, a negative. Is there any way to get a negative when you multiply times yourself? No, because if the number's negative, it's going to turn out positive, and if the number's positive, it's going to turn out positive. So this does not exist. Okay, so there's some part of the graph that's not going to be there, because it does not exist. So let's figure out the little, uh, what do we got, a little table of values here for the square root of x. The absolute value is pretty easy, but I'm going to pick some nice, friendly values here for x. Let's pick 0. The square root of 0 is 0. Let's pick 1. The square root of 1 is 1. Let's pick 4, because I know the square root of 4 is 2. And I'm going to, do you notice what, oop, you notice what numbers I'm picking? These are called perfect squares, because they're nice and easy to graph. Like the square root of 9 is 3. Let's use 16. That's off the chart, though. We are off the chart in here. So we have basically two functions right now. I'm going to graph them on here. Let's graph these points. So you can do this with any function. You can build a table, and you can put them on a graph. So let's pause the video, graph these two functions. Ready, set, go. Okay, so I'm back, and I have my two different tables here. And I changed the color of the second one just so it can be really clear. And if you notice, what do we have? Ooh, my graph's a little bit off. Okay, fix that up there. So, you know, we graph negative 2, 2. Negative 1, 1, 0, 0, and you get this little V looking thing. So absolute value graphs look like V's. Let's write that down. And then for the square root, if you notice, that one's a little bit curved. It kind of goes out like this. So at first, it's going uh, up, you know, at a regular rate, and then it kind of slows down so that it goes up less quickly. So it, anytime if you want to look at a function, that kind of looks like that, um, you can graph it. Now, here's the question. Where do they equal each other? Where does the absolute value of x equal the uh, square root of x? Well, there's two places right here that we can see graphically. So I'm going to zoom in right there. You can see that they equal each other right here at 0, 0. And they also equal each other right here at 1, 1. Okay, so at 0, 0 and at 1, 1, or if x equals 0, or if x equals 1. Those are the x values where they equal each other. This side will equal that side. Well, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to take graphs, and we're going to look at where they equal each other. And luckily, we have our technology. You're going to need your calculator, because uh, we're going to have the calculator do most of the work for us. Some things to know before we get started. There are some common shapes of graphs that you should know about. Absolute values, we just learned, look like a V when you graph it. Okay, square roots kind of look like this thing, an arrow taken off. And then x squareds, we've graphed some of those in the past. They look like this. All right, a U. Now, these could be different forms of it, which means the U could be upside down, or maybe the V's upside down, but they all have that general shape. Okay, other shapes we have. Lines, we know that, and we know Mr. Bean taught us about exponential looking graphs. They can look like that. So we have to know what the graph kind of looks like, and you'll see why here in a second. So what we're going to do is we're going to graph that, now some equations, look, this is easy. We don't need to graph this, and I started with a real easy one so you could see you know basically what we're doing like you can solve this in your head probably you could go negative 2x negative 2x you get an x minus 3 minus 3 you get negative 13 so we know if you do algebra you get x equals negative 13 but what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this into an equation and graph both sides kinda like we did up here we're gonna find where one side is gonna equal the other side in this case 
the two sides we're going to put in y1 and y2 in our graph in the calculator okay so y1 we're going to make 2x minus 10 and y2 we're going to make 3x plus 3 and we're going to see where they equal each other so it's time to bring out the calculator okay you remember if you want to reset your calculator you can hit second memory and then 712 and then it'll make it a brand new calculator for you and as i said we're going to hit the y1 button up here and this is where you can put uh, functions into your calculator and it will graph them for you so we're looking at what are the two equations I've forgotten them already 2x minus 10 and 3x plus 3 so 2x you have to use this button right here for the x minus 10 and then I'm gonna go down and then 3x plus 3 alright we put that into your calculator does it look right looks good to me and then we're gonna go to the graph part all right, now, these two cross somewhere, but they don't cross on my screen. So another part of this lesson we're going to have to learn how to do is to fix the window. Now, the window normally is at negative 10 to positive 10 for both the X and the Y. If you hit the window button, it tells you negative 10 to positive 10 for the X and negative 10 to positive 10 for the Y. That's what the graph looks like. But you can tell by this graph, we know these are straight lines because they're linear. And we've learned about what linear graphs look like. These are in y equals mx plus b form, right? So these are going to be straight lines, and they're going to cross way down here somewhere. So to see where they're going to cross, I'm going to have to go further to the left. That's going to be my x minimum value. And further down, that's going to be my y minimum value. So there's no right answer for this next part. We just need to play around with the window so that we can see the graph. So what I'm going to do is change this to negative 40. That's a guess. And I'm going to change the y minimum maybe to negative 50. All right, I hit enter and I go back and I look at the graph. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. For us, those two values work because now I can see where they cross on the screen. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is fix the window so that we can see where the intersection is. Because sometimes it's not going to be on the graph in front of us. And now is the easy part. We just have to calculate, so we're going to hit second and then calculate the intersect. That's choice five, so I hit the five button. Now, you could have up to, let's look at this, how many different Y's are there? There's nine Y's on here, so that means nine different lines you could have on your screen at one time. So when you hit second, calculate the intersect, and you're here, you're going to have to tell it the two curves. So the first curve, it's on the blue curve. You can tell the equation up here. You hit enter. It's on the red curve different equation you hit enter and then take a guess do you want me to take a guess somewhere around negative 15 yes I do and it finds the intersection for us so this one X is going to equal negative 13 right now I'm not too worried about the Y value but we we're, we're gonna know that the X equals negative 13 now I have this nice little picture here I'm gonna take a picture of it beautiful picture and let's copy that and we'll put it down in the notes okay so we're gonna put the solution we're gonna write it down here as X equals negative 13 because that was our x value all right and that's it and that's how we found the solution by graphing it now one more thing before you do number two by yourself is I'm going to show you how to reset the window in the calculator let's go back to the graph uh, this is fine for this problem but if I go and clear these lines out then go back to the window the graph the lines are gone but the window still messed up so if you hit zoom and then six that'll take you back to a standard window which is negative 10 to 10 okay so that being said what I want you to do right now I want you to pause the video yes pause the video and do number two all by yourself ready set go pause the video all right so I hope you feel like I didn't set you up for failure here we put the two equations in you go to the graph and now look what happens there's nothing on here so you have to be a little bit savvy we go back to the equations let's look at them well, I know this, y2 equals 12. y equals 12. The y-intercept is 12 on that, so I need to go way up to 12, but my window only goes up to 10. So I need to fix that window. I'm going to go down. Now, if I want to go higher, that's the y-value because it's the y-axis. Let's change that to 20 and see what the graph looks like. Ah, I can see it now. Okay, so this is y equals 12. This is the line y equals 12. It's constant. All right, we learned that before. It appears as though I need to go more to the right this time. So to fix the window there, we're going to change the x max value. Let's go to 50. Is that far enough? I don't know. Let's check it. It appears to be far enough. So when I calculate the value, second calculate, the intersect, I can hit enter, enter, and then enter a third time, and I get 28. So that solves that problem right there. 
And one thing to notice before we move on from that one, notice how on the top I had to use parentheses around the 2x plus 4. Make sure you do your order of operations because it's that whole quantity 2x plus 4 that's divided by 5. So when you put it in y1, make sure that that's the way you did it. All right, next one here. Well, we need to learn a couple things. We need to learn about parentheses and using the squared button and exponent, if you don't know how to do that, and the absolute value. We're going to ask you as you solve these to round to the nearest hundredth. All right, so I'm going to do number three and five, and then you can do these two by yourself. So number three, let's get started. X plus 12 squared. Let's go back to our calculator. So x plus 12 quantity squared with parentheses. So when I put it in the calculator, you have to make sure we have x plus 12. We're going to use this button here. That's the caret. That's how you get an exponent. And we'll raise it to the second power. Now that needs to equal, back to the other one, 2 times the absolute value of x. So you have a 2 times absolute value of x. So here we're going to put 2 times the absolute value. Now absolute value is under the math. you got to hit the math button and go over to where it says number. And the first thing you see is abs. So that's the absolute value of x. Okay, so I look at my graph. Oh, my graph, my windows still mess up. I'm going to hit zoom 6. Now, at the beginning I told you, hey, we have to know how these things are shaped. We have v's, we have u's. We have one of these is a squared, so it's going to be a u, and one of them is a v. That's important because if we look at our calculator, here's the v and the u's over here. So if you can imagine, this is going to intersect twice. We can't think it's just going to intersect once. It's actually going to go through twice because this is going to be a U shape. Let's fix the window a little. Let's go, uh, let's fix the X minimum. We'll change that to 50. And let's see what the graph looks like then. All right, so you can kind of see what's going on there. We have a U and a V. We need to go much higher, though. So that's the Y maximum. We're going to change that to 50 as well. I don't think 50 will be enough, but let's check it out. Well, I was obviously wrong. So 50 is enough. Notice that we can see that it intersects twice. This is where it's important that you know it intersects twice. We're going to do second calculate the intersect. And we have two of them now. So first you have to find your cursor. Where is your cursor? Where is your cursor? This gives you an idea of where the cursor is. It's at negative 26. So I think I'm going the wrong way. So as I go to the right, you can see it show up. So it's asking me, what is the first curve? What I'm going to do is I'm going to get as close to this first intersection as I can. And I'm going to hit Enter. And the second curve is that red curve. I'm going to hit Enter again. Do you want me to take a guess somewhere around this value in here, in this range? So when I hit Enter, it'll find this answer. It won't find this answer here. All right, so that's negative 18. I'm going to write that down so I don't forget it. So one solution is x equals negative 18. Should we also like sketch a picture of it? Yes, we need to sketch a picture. So for me, that's kind of easy. All I do is this, and then I go here, and we're going back, and then I paste it, and we're looking. You, however, are going to have to draw a nice little sketch so we can see the shape of your graph, and we want to know the two places. I should be able to look at this and tell the two places on your graph. Now, we only found one of the intersections, so we have to go back, second, calculate, the intersect so we choose choice 5 and then we're going to move the cursor back closer to the other intersection point which is somewhere around here hit enter hit enter again do you want me to take a guess somewhere near x equals negative 8 yes I do and I get x equals negative 8 is actually the solution there so I'm going to write that down as well so those are the two solutions to this one we had to change the window you know what we can do now uh, let's go on to number five. I think we're good with that one. And then I'll have you do four and six. So number five, let's put those in the calculator. Pause the video, put it in the calculator, try it on your own. We'll see how well you do. And then I'll talk you through it if you need help. Whoa, this one's tough. I forgot that you might not know where that square root is. So I kind of stopped right there. I put the first half in y1. That's one function here. And then the second function here, I need a square root. It's a square root of x plus five. And we want to make it negative. So I'm going to type negative square root. So it's second. The square root is right here. It's above the squared button. And we're going to have x plus 5. And then at the end of that, we have a minus 8 on the outside. So you need to go to the right. Notice how that stopped the, the square root. And we do minus 8. All right. So I want to know, where are these two going to be equal? I'm going to graph them to find out. So according to our graph right now, whoa, I notice I have x to the third. This is kind of coming down there. That is a square root function. Let me move down a little bit. Let's change that window. We're going to change that y minimum to about negative 20 and see if that helps us out. 
And again, these numbers, there's no right answer for that window. Maybe you did negative 30, but I could kind of see that negative 20 was going to be enough. And now we have three answers to get on this one. So sometimes there's three answers. Yeah, there are. So I'm going to calculate the intersect. I'm going to go left to right because that's just a good way to do it so we don't forget any. So I'm going to hit enter three times. And the first answer is going to be negative 2.14 because that rounds up. There's an 8 there. So let's put the sketch in here. All right, so sketch it out. And then put your solutions. We get negative 2.14. When you find the other two, you're going to get x equals 0.37 and x equals 1.77. So those are solutions, and they're rounded to the nearest hundredth. Okay, I think you have enough right now. I think you should be able to do five, ooh, four and six. So go ahead and solve with the calculator numbers four and six. Go. Pause the video. By the way, you can't fake this on a mastery check. You better pause the video and do it. Okay, so we're back here. Uh, here's what I got. Two lines. They intersected way up here, and I had to go way out. So here's the window that I eventually used. Yours could be a little bit different. That's okay, but I get x equals 12 for that. Shouldn't be a problem. Now, 6. I wanted to show you a little trick. So I put 6 into my... Uh, y1 and y2, not a problem there. And I'm going to go to the graph, and I notice this. Uh, so I'm going to go more to the right. I'm going to go up a little bit. So I'm going to fix my window. Let's go 15 for the x max, and we'll go 15 for the y max, and we'll see if that gives us a good view here. Okay, pretty close. Now, uh, this intersection point is pretty clear the way we have it right now. So let's find that so we have that answer. Second, calculate the intersect. And I'm going to go over to that point there. I'm going to get right next to it. I'm going to hit enter three times, and it's going to give me an intersection of 10.38. So I'm going to write that down. And I'm going to include the sketch right there so we can see that that is the solution. Now this other solution right here, this is what I wanted to show you. There's a feature. First off, two features. Number one, if you go into the mode, you can change, you go down seven times, see where it says full, horizontal, or graph or table. I'm going to change this to horizontal and hit enter. Now what you can do is you can go to your graph, it'll show you the graph, and it'll show you the equations. So that might be useful as you're doing this. Because then you can go to your window, and you can go back to this, and it keeps the graph right up there for you. But the other thing I wanted to show you how to do is how to use the zoom button and we have a feature called zoom box so that's choice one and what you can do see this this area right here where they intersect I want a better picture of it so I want to zoom in so if you hit enter with zoom box you can then scroll over and scroll up and notice how it makes a box now the box you make is going to be the new window for the calculator so it will zoom in right to here that's that's zooming in pretty good hit enter and you can clearly see where they intersect. And that might make it easier to calculate the intersect. Now, when will this be useful? This would be useful if you're not sure. Maybe the two lines are close to each other. You don't know if they intersect once or twice because one might be nonlinear. So you can zoom in and actually get a better picture of it. Answer here, 5.26. So I will write that down too. Now, I'll put a little reference guide right here. Uh, remember, we started by resetting all the, all the memory right there putting equations in to the calculator as functions, looking at graphs and windows and resetting the windows in there, zooming out. Um, we didn't talk about that, but you can see what that does. You have to hit enter after you hit zoom three. Drawing a box we just talked about. Looking at a graphing uh, equation simultaneously. That is the mode change, okay, where you can see that. That's actually pretty cool. Check that out. You can do that. And then if you wanted to do, like, when you quit, see the graph stays up there, and you could do some, like, you want to do some math and stuff and work out numbers, but the graph stays up there, so that's pretty cool. Uh, the square root, that's how you get to the square root, that's how you get the absolute value, and that's how you get exponents. Okay, one more thing. I don't want to forget about it before we leave. What if you're graphing two things? I don't have an example like this, but what if I'm graphing two things and they don't intersect? What do you think you do there? Well, you're probably right. They don't intersect. It's no solution. There is no point at which they're equal to each other. So you write down no solution. That is super important. If they don't intersect, no solution to the equation. Uh, guess what? There's one like that on the mastery check. I just let the cat out of the bag. This is Mr. Kelly, K-Town. Remember, it's nice to be important. More important to be nice. So